Awesome. So thank you everyone for coming tonight. I so appreciate it. Um, it's an honor to be here. Um, I do lecture and, and go around. Um, we're just spreading the word, educating people. Um, so thank you. Thank you for showing up tonight. Um, so tonight I'm going to talk about reducing our exposure to toxins in our homes. This is the same uh, presentation I gave to the UN in Geneva. And oddly enough, so they work, uh, it was at the chemicals department there. And they work, um, you know, on mercury, on, on heavy duty stuff, but they wanted, uh, they asked me to come in to educate them on what's going on in their own homes. So that's what we'll do today. So if you could go to the next slide. So first I'm going to talk to you about my story. This is me. Um, that's my grandfather who has since passed and this is our family farm in Ohio. My family are fourth generation farmers. Uh, we still have a working farm. It's in Bowling Green. I'm picking onions there with my grandfather and uh, from working and, and, and spending every single summer actually with my grandparents, uh, I grew uh, to have an appreciation for the land and for nature and for making things a simple way as we were discussing community. And uh, from this inspiration, I uh, started the Good Home Company, which I just briefly discussed with you, which is a natural cleaning products company. We are based in New York City, but we manufacture in Allentown. I've had it for 24 years. Uh, when I started, I started in my kitchen, and it was a simple, at the time, Aveda had taken off. Uh, there wasn't anything else but uh, orange glow, and the rest was, you know, your, your Tides, your all, your Cloroxes. And I had the idea, I said, you know, well, you know, if, why can't we have a cleaning product that's natural? That's like, you know, what we would put in a pie, you know, why does it have to be all these chemicals? And why does it have to smell like wildflowers, which doesn't really have a smell, right? You know, we throw it in. So that's what I did. I literally, I put the things together. I didn't have a chemist background. Uh, I graduated from Parsons School of Design. I did have a BFA. So I designed my own labels. And as I mentioned before, we, you know, took it around in shopping bags. And uh, the rest, they say, is history. So we still have good home company. And about four and a half years ago, um, you know, we're you know, going along. Um, I had, uh, we had a deal, we were merging with, we had licensing agreement with Clorox that fell through. Um, my best friend, who is also my attorney, who did the deal, had just recently passed away from cancer. He was at the age of 48. And uh, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. And four and a half years ago, I got a call that I had breast cancer. And I was, so I'm going, to, I'm going to be 50 this year. Um, so what was I then? That was 46, right? Roughly 46, 45 years old. And I was lucky enough that I had cancer that was stage zero one. It was very treatable. The, the gene or the mutation of it, uh, of the cancer cells was common. And so I just had six weeks of radiation and that was it. And I was given a clean bill of health and my chances of getting it are like anyone else. Um, but unfortunately, those chances now have increased from one in two, men will have cancer, and one in three. So it's kind of not like if, but when. So I, I took that to heart. Um, you know, it was kind of, as they say, you know, you, you, you face death and you, you get a second chance and you, you can have, you know, do many things with it. Um, but I knew at that point that it was up to me that I was going to have to spread the word that this wasn't normal. My having lost my friend at uh, 48, um, the same uh, time I actually had surgery the exact day, my other girlfriend had um, same age as I uh, am, uh, was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. She passed away uh, six weeks later, leaving behind a son who was nine years old. Um, I have a friend in Massachusetts whose husband in his 40s also had colon cancer, stage four. He's doing great. But there's a lot of cancer going around. And I knew that this um, wasn't normal. Okay? I remember my grandmother, you know, at the age of 50 wasn't talking about cancer. My mother wasn't talking about it. You know, it wasn't something that usually happened until you were in your 70s. So I took a deep dive. And I wrote a book called Detox Your Home. And I looked into everything, and I mean everything. I would just sit there on the computer and I would look at our clothes, everything that's going on. And um, that is all found in the book. And you can see, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we're exposed to that we don't realize. So today I'm gonna talk about the simple things, not simple things, but I mean, the, a few things in our home that we can make simple decisions to get them out of our home and live a better and healthier life. 
So next slide, please. So we live in a world of tremendous chemical exposure. Uh, we have pollution from petroleum products, such as plastic. There are endocrine disrupting preservatives in our lotions, BPAs in our air, not just in our bottles, but in our air. Uh, more prevalent in our air than they are in our water. And uh, cancer causing clean water destroying glyphosate. And they're all in our homes as well. Next, please. So our exposure is 24-7. When we sleep, we're exposed to formaldehyde, benzenes, and VOCs. Um, this is coming from our flame retardants in our furniture and our mattresses, uh, everything that we lay on, our pillows, our comforters, our sheets. Um, I, I can see over here that I don't want to terrify anyone. <laughs> And that's, I'm also, I'm, I'm going to have solutions to this. So I know this is very, so it's going to be very heavy, but I, I, I try to, I want to, there's hope. So I, please know that, but, um, but we'll go in deep right now. The morning coffee with milk has dioxins in it. Uh, we brush our teeth with triclosan and fluoride. Um, fluoride's a neurotoxin, by the way. So I want you to switch from your, your Colgate I'm toothpaste. To. Um, <laughs> there's, there's so many other good, good ones out there. Um, shower and bath products, um, our commute to work and our air, our office, our office, there's tons of, tons of uh, PFAs in the furniture, yoga, even our yoga mats. Like if you're using, you know, you know not a proper yoga mat that's made, for, it's a PVC mat, you're going to get formaldehyde and phthalates in that our dinner and our, uh, our dioxins in our meat and our dairy. And of course, in our home, we're getting uh, VOCs and PFAs from the air from our carpet and furniture. Next. So first, we're going to talk about endocrine disruptors in our personal care products. So does ever, has anyone heard of what an endocrine disruptor is? I know you guys are pretty well educated on this topic. So you know, they're in, mainly in parabens. Um, there was a big scare about sodium uh, lauryl sulfate a few years ago, and sodium lauryl sulfate, the reason that we get dioxins in, um, you know, they were saying that it's cancer causing. So the sodium lauryl sulfate comes from coconut, okay, and it's a thoxylate. It goes through a process, and it goes through a chemical composition. I mean, it's kind of like Velveeta cheese. It's once started out as milk, and then it's Velveeta cheese. It's not brie. Okay, it's not a fine cheddar, it's not a, you know, <laughs> it's, it's ending up as Velveeta, but it's, it's really processed. Now, sodium lauryl sulfate actually doesn't go through the ethoxylation process, okay? The ethoxylation process is what causes the dioxin runoff. It happens in manufacturing, it goes into our water, it's what companies dump into our, you know, into the rivers and stuff, and it can also be found in the products. Okay. Uh, a few years ago, Tide um, had, um, they used they use the Lorith, and that is the one that has the dioxin. Sodium lauryl sulfate is a detergent, but it's okay to use. It's not great for you. It's very drying. It's a harsh detergent, but to use it on your clothing or something is not bad. But it's the Lorith that's the bad one. So Tide had it, and they were, you know, they are supposed to monitor it. Now, when you think about the government and you think about, you know, I, I thought like everything on the shelf has to go through a process, but having my own cleaning company, I, you know, I know that the bases that you get it, the people who you buy the soap base from is supposed to test it and monitor it, but they do it in batches. That's legally what they're required to. It's not every single one. So Tide wasn't doing this, and it turns out that they had five times the amount of dioxins that's allowed. So a, a, a mom group in California found this out, got pulled from the shelf, and they had to reformulate. And that is how we make change. It's not really our FDA or EPA, um, but it's us. Fluoride. So studies have shown that it's not as effective as it's thought. Now, this was just a Newsweek. All right. Um, so, um, and I'm so happy that we have a dentist in the office that concurs with this. Um, that, you know, I'm not saying it's bad, but we should not have it in high doses. And what happened was is that when it first came out that it was helpful, they were putting it in our water. But now we have every single product that we use has fluoride in it, so it's too much. They actually, the U.S. government lowered our um, uh, President Obama, when he was in office, lowered the level of fluoride because of this. There's, we're showing that there's a lot of uh, uh, fluorosis going on in our children. And then the endocrine disruptors. So endocrine disruptors control our weight, our fertility, our thyroid, and our hormones. No surprise. That's kind of what's going on right now 
in, in the public, right? We have all these infertility problems. I know girls 25 years old, 25 years old who, who can't get pregnant. Um, and they've been using these creams that we've been using that have parabens and that have the endocrine disruptors in them, phthalates. These are hidden ingredients. So you could go, you could even go and buy the lotion and it won't tell you if it has phthalates in it or not because it's a hidden ingredient, okay? Um, so these are things that we really need to look at and when using, um, at the end of the presentation, I'm gonna tell you what the solutions are that we're gonna use instead of these. Uh, next, please. Number two, glyphosate in our food. So a study in France just came out showing that those who consume the most organic food were 25% less likely to have cancer. Simple math there, right? Um, Roundup glyphosate was found in 26 breakfast cereals, Cheerios being one of them. Kills weeds in our soil, um, and even casual use with home gardening can leak into your well water. I think the woman mentioned here that you know if someone your neighbor can use it, um, and it can go into your well water, it can go into your garden. It comes to us via runoff. Um, this is my number one thing right now that I'm trying to fight. Uh, we have bills in New York State. I'm not sure about New Jersey, but in New York State, we do have a bill trying to ban glyphosate products. We're at least trying to get it banned. It's used in all of our city parks. It's used in our public schools. It's used on our sidewalks in New York, right? Everywhere, everywhere. So they spray it on slides. Um, like that children, that the slides that they go down, they like wipe it down with it. There's like processes. Yeah, tomorrow I'm attending a pesticide conference tomorrow morning for uh, a Friday and Saturday, actually going over all of this, the harms. But we're seeing it more and more in children. Um, to, um, that this, you know, our health is going downhill. It's going downhill. It should be getting better. We have more technology. Part of the reason is definitely glyphosate. Um, glyphosate also ruins our soil. So um, one of the things that, that's a whole other presentation, but st do you know about soil regeneration? Yeah, right? So soil regeneration is a process, it's a no-till process, and it's where you also don't use pesticides. And it's the way we used to farm before we got industrialized. And it brings healthier food, we have more nutrient food, and it also sequesters the carbon. So part of the problem with climate change right now is that we have too much CO2 in the air and we're not able to sequester it. Soil and water are natural ways to do that, but when we till the soil, it doesn't do that. Okay, part of the reason our soil is dead is because of the glyphosate. So that is um, something that we definitely, eating organic is one of the best things that you could do in your home. Is it's worth the price. Like any states regulate it? So the good news is, is that they, so they're banning it, um, that California, San Francisco banned it, LA banned it, they're banning it in their parks. Now I, you have to really go and look at the law. Yeah. Um, hopefully they can ban the complete use of it, but it's owned by Monsanto, which is now owned by Bayer. It's very powerful corporations. Right. Um, it, that is not a... a you know, a, a made up fairy tale or a... Um, what is it, the, the you know, when, a, it, why can't I find that word? When people, you know, a, a conspiracy theory. <laughs> Thank you, right? Thank you. But, yeah, it was just awarded. It causes cancer. It causes, yes. Yeah. I just read a long article, and it talked about how glyphosate is in, like, all our foods, including beer, wine, organic wine. Yes. And it's just because of the runoff and the way that you just control it. Yes, yes. Yes. Right, correct. It's not going to get rid of it. But the more that we can buy organic, then the, the more our soil, come on in, come on in, the more our soil can recover. At the wrong area? Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, uh, Driscoll's, you know, the, in California, they have strawberry fields, right? Next to them is the organic, and then there's the non-organic, and then the pesticides just fly right over, and the glyphosate gets over there. Absolutely correct. But if we can encourage them to not do it, and if we can have bills, and if we can ban it, the better, the better. Next. Okay, so eating organic also ensures that we don't get GMOs. That's the only way. So if you go to Whole Foods and you see that, you know, there's a, um, the labeling thing, and this is also in my book, they, they can be quite deceiving. If it says non-GMO, then it's non-GMO if it has that. They go through the verification. But 
the only way to ensure it if it doesn't have that is to buy organic. So when you buy it, when you're buying organic produce, you're also knowing that you don't have GMOs. Now, pretty much all of us, if we think that we haven't had GMOs, we have, right? We've been eating GMOs for a while. Um, soy, corn, canola, if it's not organic, it's all GMO. 98% of those crops are GMO crops, right? So if you go out to dinner and it's not a 100% organic restaurant, which I don't think I've ever been to one. Does anyone know of one that exists, right? Um, yeah. 100% organic restaurant. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's nearly impossible. It's nearly impossible. Exactly. Um, yeah, and this unfortunately, this again, this is so when we were discussing, I think that's an interesting conversation, education over uh, legislation. I'm, I actually believe in legislation. I think that a lot of this, I think we can educate people, but I think if you give in the chance that corporations are going to do this. Um, I think yeah. the problem with educating yeah. is that not enough people care enough. Yeah. So yeah. They just, yeah, that's they a problem. They don't take the opportunity to become educated, mm -hmm. and they just, they just want their yard to look nice. Yes. Meal on the table. They don't care how it got there. Yes. It tastes good. And so yes. I don't think you can get to everybody that way. Legislation is mandated. Yes. You have to do it. It's that, and it, and, and, it, and it brings up conflict with that Buddhist concept of live in the moment because they're literally not looking at the future, right? right. You know, it's like you can't, we can't even get two weeks ahead. It's usually two hours ahead. So, um, next. Okay, so toxins in meat and dairy. Now, this was very interesting. This is something I recently uh, learned about and explored and was kind of surprised to find out. So, dioxins are one of the, it's, um, the, it's, a, it's the, the strongest, it's a carcinogen, okay? It's the most um, toxic thing that we could come across, uh, dioxins, all right? And we get them via, um, you know, glyphosate from pesticides, herbicides that are sprayed. And the animal grain is sprayed with it. So my, my own grandparents, my own family farm, um, I'm sure did this, um, that when it doesn't sell, you put it in the grain, in the, you know, those big silos that you see, like when you drive out in the country, and it's filled with grain. Now, they store that till next year. So if the pricing, if they didn't go to market and get good pricing or if they had excess, they're gonna store it and they're gonna sell it next year. They spray it to keep the bugs away, okay? And then that inevitably, it could go to feed to animals, but when the animals eat it, dioxins like to go to fat, okay? So they go to the fat of the animals and if you're eating bacon, if you're eating uh, beef with lots of, <laughs> lots of fat on it and dairy, right? That's where they go. Um, and then when you eat it, it goes on your fat. And that's how you get dioxins in your level. You can see that the ingestion of beef, I don't know if you can, um, uh, yeah, the, and dairy. Dairy's really high up there. Dairy's high fat. Now, one of the, yeah. So one of the shocking things that I found was, so I spend $12 every week on these free range eggs, right? these expensive eggs that chickens are living the way that chickens are supposed to live and I'm going to get the eggs, right? I'm, and I'm a, yeah, yeah, whole thing, right? You know, they, and, yeah, and they're eating, you know, and they're foraging and they're eating the worms and all that. Well, unless you know and you talk to the farmer and they've tested the soil where their chickens are foraging, the dioxins are coming from the pollution from the air, right? From like, from the manufacturing. So if the farm is next to Newark, if the farm is next to a manufacturing facility, it's going, it's going into the, the dirt, right? And the chickens are foraging it. And it's in the eggs. Eggs happen to be the highest thing in fat. So if you're eating eggs, it's the best thing to do is to eat the whites, okay? But those $12 eggs have more dioxins in them than the chickens that are in the building, right, that are organic, eating organic feed, but don't go outside. Interesting. Very interesting, right? It's a conundrum. Um, I am working on now testing this and testing meat. It's expensive. So for me to test 
I have to, I have to somehow figure, I mean, a lot of the stuff I fund myself, I'm fortunate enough that I'm able to do that, but to test all the meat would be $15,000. So I want to test like the organic meat, like the grass fed meat that people, because that would make sense that the cows are eating, you know, like how high are they in dioxins? How healthy is it versus the ones that go to the slaughterhouse? Um, in, in, you know, and that are in, in the buildings and, and treated very inhumanely, um, but don't see the light of day. So anyhow, so I, I, I'm, I'm very interested in seeing that because we're all spending our money because then it leads us to the fact that we really need to start banning glyphosate and cleaning up our air. And that's the problem. But, but I do yeah. think, I, I kind of do think that still the support of organic is critical yeah. because those farmers aren't adding the bad stuff. And right. the more that we support organic, not right. perfect in terms of the chemicals within those organic foods, it's still a better management of the land and the resources, and unless we all start doing that, right. we don't make it away from them. So as someone, so, and, and after having gone through cancer, I, I'm a, um, close to a vegan, okay? I'll eat a, li I'll eat a little bit of fish, very minimal dairy. I don't really touch it, um, and that's it, uh, just plant-based. So, and you can see that it's, it's minimal on the plants. But I agree with you. And, and for people who look at soil regeneration, soil regeneration actually involves animals. You need animals. So they go around and they, they feed off the grass and they trample it, right? And they go to the bathroom and it tramples and it goes into the soil, right? But that's how it gets its nitrogen and that's how you fertilize it. And it's all a very healthy process. And we absolutely need to get back to that. Right, and that's what's going to get us there. Um, but until then, it's good to know. You may, you know, it's a good reason to switch to plant-based. Um, next, although, and I will add that my husband and my son eat meat, and and you know, they know all this information, and my son could probably recite it. He's 12. You know, I can't. For, I, t you know, and it's a good example of like, is it education or is it legislation? Right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he will come around. He will when he's a little bit older. My husband's now coming around because my husband was just diagnosed with diabetes after I told him for two years that, you know, he needed to stop eating sugar. But, I, I mean, this is, this is human nature. Um, so plastic in our food and water. So now it's not just that we shouldn't eat things in plastic, but it's actually in our water and our food, right? 90% um, of shellfish contain microplastics. Just know that. You know, now you know that, right? Our tap water has plastic in it. 94% um, of the U.S. water has microplastics in it. 94%, right? It's unbelievable. 72% of water in France, Germany, and the U.K. has it, and 93% of bottled water, too. Okay, so it's in it. You're not escaping it. You're, you're not going to get out of it. Someone's going to invent something. Um, I have a, a, a really good water filter at home that takes out PCBs and takes out PFOAs and all that stuff, right? Um, but it can't take out the microplastics yet. Your water filter isn't doing that. They're, they're micro, you can't even see them, right? So what we need, bless you. So what we um, really need to start doing is using less plastics and we need to encourage um, uh, technology that's going to clean this mess up. Um, yeah, next, please. But it's upsetting. Well, New York State just made a big step in that direction, right? In which way? In banning the plastic bags? Yeah, it's not big enough, but yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm really like, I, yeah, but I'm like. Well, we talk a lot on the green team about, yeah. you know, because we're all on the green team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, how do we, we know what the end point is in many cases. Yeah. Do you evolve to the end point? Do you go incrementally? Like those are the discussions we have. Yes. You know, and, and how do you weigh that with the community and how do you bring the community along as well? Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, you want the community to understand what you're doing and why. I tend to be on the incremental side because you know I want things to be successful. Yeah. And I feel like if you go from point A to point B, when you want to get to point G, Yes, it takes longer and it's incremental, but you're gonna, it'll be easier to go every incremental step than from all the way from A to G. This is my perspective. Yeah. Probably, you know, it's not the big, bold changes, but we talk about this all the time. I, you, you know, know I, yes. I, we had a, I had a dinner party last night for 10, um, and this was, you know, all the topic of discussion and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and, 
and the Green New Deal and, you know, and, and all of that. Um, I just don't think, and this it's a, it comes down to opinion, right? I don't think we have enough time. I, I think right. we have to do a sweeping thing. Um, I think people, there's always going to be people complaining. You know, inevitably someone has like, we, I, I made the mistake the other day. I broke my own rule. I was on Facebook. Uh, mistake number one. Mistake number two was I, I, I went to Vice, right? And they had this thing about this man who goes around New York City and he photographs idling trucks, idling trucks and buses. It's a law in New York City that you can't idle for more than three minutes. He photographs them. We have that law in New York City. Do you have that, right? And so it's like, and, and so you can, I mean, you guys are industrial city too. You, I mean, you know. Um, and the, the headline was, man makes $9,000 a month um, policing idling trucks, right? So all the comments were like, you know, uh, you know uh, snitches get stitches. There was about, I don't know, hundreds of those, right? Um, and all, you know, I can't believe this guy's ratting people out and all this. And so then I posted mistake number three. Um, and I said, I was compelled and I didn't get, you know, sometimes you get angry, but I said, you know, I'm actually, I'm quite shocked that people aren't, I watched the story. The man did it because his brother died of lung cancer, okay? His brother didn't smoke. Air pollution is ridiculously bad. Um, and in New York City, it's awful. Um, and this law is to help you to be healthier. And so I pointed that out and said, you know, I, I'm shocked that people are so upset about this when it's actually, we need to stop it or whatever. And so then, I, yeah, it was interesting. But that's what I'm saying is that people really, they still, they were like, then someone commented and he said, well, Christine, you like your food delivered, right? You like, you like your grocery, your, your tomatoes and your fresh lettuces delivered to the grocery store. I was like, you're comparing idling to my food? Like, they can deliver it and turn the truck off. So, anyhow, so. But, but I think it starts with, like, the grassroots yeah. people who care and yeah. give, a, give a hoot. Yeah. And then they push for legislation. Yeah. And I think we do need the bold legislation because yeah. it takes the Californians, the New Yorks, yeah. the Europeans to ban certain things and to create yeah. the laws and the rules that start to get everybody else to follow, right? Yeah. Like they, we wouldn't talk about it at all in Westfield if there weren't other places that were banning them. Right. We're right. Talking about it, right. But somebody has to make a bold move. Right. It's not right. Popular. It isn't popular, and that's and, and yeah, and clearly that's the point of me sharing that is everyone's going to complain. Someone's going to complain. Right, but we, we also yeah. Are at state level. I mean, Murphy yes. So I feel like why should we be the bad guys when you may have this coming in down the pipeline? Because some of it is also politically. You want to be smart about it. Yes. Doing. Yes. But although. A friend in the New York City Council told me the fastest way to get something passed in the city is to have it almost get passed in New York State because they want to beat New York State in the city. Is that true? That makes sense. Is that true, <coughs> Councilman? <laughs> Did they pass condition prices? Yeah, it got passed. It got passed, yeah. They did pass it, and they passed the plastic bag laws. We yeah. did not pass mar marijuana. That didn't get passed because, honestly, it got tied up because they couldn't figure out how to. Um, that's a whole other conversation, but how to give equity to people right. in certain uh, communities. All right. So cleaning products. So this is this is a big thing that I, I uh, deal with. And again, I you know when I started the Good Home Company, I really um, I wanted it natural. I said to them, I want it natural. I want it good for the earth. You know, blah blah blah. Right? And a few I. I make it a point uh, probably every two, three years, we really look at our formulas. We look at what's coming down. We've changed our preservatives. I've changed that because we have newer, greener preservatives. Um, now the ones that were green that we switched to can also cause, you know, some people it's methylthiolazine, which is very popular now. Um, it's a greener preservative, but there's a limited amount of preservatives out there. There's maybe five or six, right, um, that really work. The other ones, that's it, that's it. You know, we, we need technology. We, we need new development in that. Um, but then you find out that something's bad, right? And, and they told me it was good. So they would tell me that it's okay, and then a couple years later you find out it's bad. Parabens used to be good. Um, so it's really, you know, it's, and it's also not regulated. So things that you find on your shelf in Home Depot, in Dwayne Reed, in CVS, it is the ingredient, the ingredient in the bottle, so there's probably 20, 25, whatever, right? One ingredient has been tested, right, by the EPA and they'll regulate it or the FDA, depending on the product, and that's it. 
the whole formula in itself is not tested. Just so you know, like, so you could buy a shampoo and it could have, it, I mean, I, I, I could put bleach in a shampoo if I wanted to. Now, I probably wouldn't sell that many after someone found out, right? But the point is, is that you could put it in it and it wouldn't get taken off the shelf. The only thing that gets really looked at are the ones that are certified, like that they're o OTC. So the ones like that are the hand sanitizers, right? That prove to say they kill 99% of the germs. If you make a claim, then you have to have it tested. If not, you could just throw it on the shelf. You have to have a certain point size for the ingredients, but that's it. It's completely unregulated. So unfortunately, with the cleaning products, you know, we're trusting these companies and they're using things because they're cheaper. Um, so water treatment plants do not capture all the chemicals going down the drain. Nitrogen from ammonia passes through. Remember ammonia? I mean, gosh, you know, I mean, people still clean with that. I don't even know why. My own grandmother used to take bleach and she put a teaspoon of bleach in her water with her soap and her dishwater when she hand washed. I, you know, it's, it's, and, and the, the scary thing is, is that homes that have, we think that are, we have to really rethink how we clean because we think like cleaner is healthier, but homes that use, have a high use of bleach, it was proven two years ago, an, ex an expansive study that people who use more bleach have a higher rate of respiratory illness. Okay. You're killing your own antibodies. You're, you're killing your ability to fight these things, to fight the germs. Best thing you could do, we need dirt in our food. We need healthy dirt. Our children need to get out in it. You know, It's good for the gut biome. I know everyone knows about that, right? And there's all this stuff going on about it. So we're learning about it, and that, that's great news. Um, detergents that we use, like the regular, the Tides and all that, there's about, Tide has, the first 10 ingredients actually cause respiratory illness. So the, if you look at the MSDS sheets on, on Tide detergent and you look at each ingredient, it says keep away, it causes respiratory illness. Now, I did a, t uh, a test with my detergent and with Tide for um, HSN one day. I, have not, I hadn't used Tide in 24 years. And it came out in the shirt, it was the same shirt. And the Tide shirt was like, it actually had a sheen to it. There's silicone in it. So the reason like, like the darks stay darker and the whites stay whiter, you know, the claims that they make, right? There's silicone in Tide. So they put a little coating on it. So when it goes over the black stuff, it actually has, it looks darker, right? It looks newer. Um, but there's really harsh detergents in it that are taking out all the dirt. And so they have to add all this stuff in. Unfortunately, that also, it, um, it destroys the external mucus layers that protect fish from parasites and bacteria. If you go into looking at water health and stuff, a lot of our fish have these like horrific things going on with them. Synthetic dyes don't break down or biodegrade, so there's dyes. We recently took out every single dye. They were food grade dye. It was food grade. We eat it, but it doesn't recycle. It doesn't biodegrade. We took it out of all of our products. I wish everyone would do that. It, th that should just be mandated. Um, ethoxylate ingredients, which we covered in the beginning, and, um, ho and homes with a high use of bleach. So these right here are algae blooms, if you've seen that, right? The, what's going on? Does anyone have family in, in Florida? Yeah, down, Florida's a mess right now, um, unfortunately. <laughs> but they, they um, I have family in Florida. Uh, I have friends in Florida. I used to spend a lot of time in Miami, right? I like it. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's easy, it's accessible, but they have done a terrible job of monitoring it. And they have so much nitrogen runoff um, from their um, farming and from the glyphosate there that's going into the Lake Okeechobee, right? And then it starts smelling and it starts doing all this and it's rotting, it's like this festering thing and then they dump it in the ocean. So recently, the latest study that came out, the latest study from the algae blooms and my friend said, Christine, we couldn't even sit outside because the air quality, right? You could smell it, but it also it's hard. If you have asthma or any, your children have that, she couldn't sit outside. Well, that algae has also been shown that the dolphins are now are, are um, dying from it. And they examined them, and they have the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. Okay, they're mammals. So the people, so I said to, if you make the connection right there, I said to, you know, my sister-in-law, I said, you need to be really careful. You may not be going into the ocean, but you're breathing that air, and it's coming around. So um, I'm just, you know, it's just a sign of things to come, right? If they don't get that under control, um, they're, they're uh, it's going to be a, a lot of problems. Um, and I think the other problem is, is that they, they, um, there's older people down there. So 
it's real easy to blame that on age and stuff, but um, I, I personally wouldn't live down there. What's yeah. your perspective of, outside of your products? Like, yeah. Obviously, there's a lot yeah. of other brands. That, yeah. You know, seventh generation, yeah. et cetera. Like, what's your assessment of them? So, are they, you know, yeah. do you think they're, like, natural? Or are they, like, sort of... You know, oh, it depends. So, so there's many, again, it goes through an ethoxylation process. And we have two levels. I have two levels in Good Home. Um, the, the first one is we use the, the soaps that they're, they're not, we're completely sulfate free, right? And we're anywhere from 90 to 97 percent plant based. Okay, but a lot of people could say that, right? Because it comes from that. Again, it's Velveeta cheese. What I recommend and what I use in my own home from Good Home is a Castile soap, it's vinegar and it's water, and that's it. And baking soda. I know you have a comment on that. Yeah. Yeah. But the one thing on EWG, though, is that I, I will explain. And I have some grades on there that are A's, and I have some grades on there that are D's, okay? I have full disclosure with this, and I've also discussed it with them. They use an algorithm. They don't look at the formulas. They look at just the MSDS sheet. So when we had, so we haven't, re, we reformulated and we took all the colorants out. So that gave most of my products a C. All right, I haven't resubmitted them yet, um, but just, just because <laughs> it goes through a thing. But they don't look. I've been on the phone with their lawyers, and I said, "You don't. You need to look at the percentage of what people are using in there, right? Because borax actually, I think, can is is a great laundry booster. All right, but it's natural. So is asbestos. Okay, so they're both mined, but you can't borax in itself when it's in a liquid form is not harmful." and it biodegrades. But when you're in the mines, it's not, health, it's not healthy for the people. Right. That's, that's a huge consideration. I'm not, you know, I mean, I think work, or, you know, but if you are looking for a way, are you gonna use that um, versus bleach? I'd rather use borax, you know, and that comes down to then, do we get people to live with black grout? Are people gonna live with their tiles having black on it? Do you have black on your grout? What, um, what do you use? So a steam cleaner does an amazing job. It gets the best clean. But yeah. I use, like you, the only thing I use besides vinegar and um, Castile soap is I also use um, hydrogen peroxide yeah. and baking soda. Yeah. Um, and I also like super washing soda or sodium carbonate. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And those things, I find you do, I make an all natural bleach. I would yeah. never use chlorine. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't, I clean my grout, but I don't use any of the whiteners, and I have black grout. <laughs> I do, you know, my, and, and the person who cleans my house hates it. Um, you know, and I, I have, but she one day brought bleach from home. I don't have any bleach in my house. She brought bleach from home, and she cleaned it. I couldn't sleep in my own bedroom that night. Yeah, it was that hard because I don't have it in my house, right? So, yeah, it's to, A doctor told me, you know when you use bleach and your hands feel slimy? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what happens. Well, well, it is. So it is. So the VOCs are in the air, right? So the VOCs. So VOCs are volatile organic compounds. It's a scientific name for what the stuff that we breathe, right? And you think that you, some VOCs you can't even smell, and they're there. The, the toughest thing in your home is actually your air quality. And if you were going to do anything in your home, I would suggest that you monitor that. Um, and um, we're almost at the end, and then I, I'll, get, I'll give you suggestions on how to do that. So next. So avoid synthetic clothing. So what, a lot of the things that we talked about, the plastics, so the polyesters, the polar fleece, the Old Navy polar fleece, um, yoga pants made from recycled plastic. They're made from recycled bottles. How could they be bad, right? They're leaching these little microfibers every single time you wash them, and it goes into um, our waterways, and it's not trapped. Our water treatment planets don't get it. Um, so we have more microplastic in our oceans than we do stars in our galaxies. 
and every single one of us has it in our bodies. So this is something that we really need to focus on. Um, I talked with Patagonia, um, and good thing is that they, they, they put their money where their mouth is. They, just so you know, they sell it. They still sell it, right? But they know it. They sell this thing called a guppy bag, which I have, and I put all my stuff in there, and it's this... Um, plastic, right? But it's, it's, a, it's a form, it's a woven bag, and you can put your stuff in and wash it, and then it traps the microfibers. Okay, it's called a guppy bag. Next. Yeah, okay, so PFAs and water repellents. Has anyone seen this movie called The Devil We Know? Anyone see it? All right. It, this is an amazing film. It's in 19, in the early 40s, um, 1938, DuPont created Teflon. We all know what Teflon is, right? And they created this product called Teflon, and um, it was a miracle product, and women were working in the factory, and there were, we didn't have the EPA then. We actually got the EPA from Richard Nixon. If it, no one knew that, we got the EPA in the 70s. Um, thank Nixon for that. And um, we, uh, so we were creating this stuff, and, and uh, come to find out, um, 3M also made it too. It's waterproofing, and it's also used in all sorts of stuff. It's used on our shoes, it's used on our sleeping bags, on our camping gear, Patagonia uses it, all of that. The women were having uh, children that had severe deformities. Um, they dumped it when they, they did it. It was in um, Chicago, in, that, in a town there, and they um, had a waterway, and there was farmland, and some guy sold his farmland. And uh, to them, and they, he, you know, they promised him, yeah, we're just going to use it for this. But they were dumping their manufacturing runoff into the water. And all his cows died. They had, they had deformed babies. And then finally, it was completely wiped out. And he won a case against them. He won a case. It was banned. It was banned in 2015. <laughs> And now they use a new class, it's called Gen X and C6, and it's not much better, it's still doing the same thing. Our, do you know when you get your coffee cup from Starbucks and it's got that waxy kind of thing in it? Those are PFAs. You're drinking them, right? When you buy a hamburger and it's wrapped in the liner and the wax, you know, it's like, a, it's that waxiness to keep the grease, those are PFAs. So they are in all of our bodies. They single-handedly, single-handedly, just decimated all our water. It's in every single water, and it's not biodegradable. It is not coming out. That's not coming out. It's in there. So this is why when I use uh, the uh, they do the water treatment plants do test for it, and they can pull it out. So that unfortunately it can be done via the filter. Uh, New York State has great water, um, but I will recommend towards the end what you should get for that. Next, yeah, it's, it's frightening. Um, this is a list of where it can be found and everything. Even our electronics, uh, it's, um, it's prevalent everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. This is not. It is not. Okay. It is not. But um, you, David, can you, you get the? Book before you go to bed? Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> can, but you could. We could get you the presentation. We can get you the presentation. Yeah, I can send it out to everybody. Yeah. Okay. Next. Uh, China still uses it in its regular form, just FYI. It's not regulated there. Wow. Yeah, they're having serious problems with their water. They're already noticing it and uh, trying to clean it up. Um, so lastly, this is the last one we're going to talk about, is exposure to RF. So the Wi-Fi. So we have this, we have this cell phone use, and um, we went from 1G to 2Gs. Now we're at 5Gs. And it hasn't been tested, I believe, since 1998, right? Uh, and we're already at 5G's now, and um, we don't really know what's happening. Um, we do know that there are higher rates, that was proven that there's higher rates of brain tumors if you use the phone on your head, like everyone uses the headset. If you use the pods, you're not protecting yourself. You need to have the wire going into the phone. My son hates me for that, but I won't let him have the pods. Uh, when they play with their devices on their laps, in particular, children should have it in airplane modes, just so that just means they can't play with others, but they can still play their game. Um, but at a minimum, Wi-Fi disrupts your sleep and your attention span. So if you're, when you're sleeping in bed, you should really not have your phones next to you in your bed at all. Um, where you put your Wi-Fi monitor, the, you know, the, um, thank you, the router, um, is important. Okay, I keep mine out in the living room. I actually had someone come in and measure in my old apartment where all the Wi-Fis were. We had a cell phone tower on our, on our um, roof. 
I was on the fifth floor in Manhattan, and so we found out that we were actually quite low. But the, um, you know, the cordless phone, right, those have really high RFs, and that was going into my son's room. So we got rid of those. Um, but we turn off the Wi-Fi at night, and if you want to have it on if you work late, because my husband does work late and stuff, keep it in a closet, keep it in a room where it's going to be contained. It's the best way to do it. Don't, you know... You know, some people would have it like right next to their heads because they want to have that Wi-Fi all the time, right? Convenience, yeah. 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 I, you know, I haven't looked at anything. I, there, I'll give you, there, um, there's a doctor who really examines all of this, but it would make sense that it is doing something like that. You know, we're all energy. We're all waves. Like there's sonar. If you look at like what's going on with the animals as well, when they do sonar waves in the, in the oceans and also with the cell towers with the birds and they're losing their direction and their migration, problem, eh, migration path. Um, it's a big problem. There was a case, it was in Cali, that just came out. AT&T took down a cell tower that was next to a school after five children came down with cancer. Five. Wow. Yeah. Right next to it. Right next to the school. Uh, I can send you the article. Yeah. It just came out like two days ago. Um, so, you know, AT&T doesn't just do that. And like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there was, it was enough of a, yeah. Um, I, 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 Wi-Fi also bounces, so it goes, and you, and you have to look like, you know, as the guy was explaining to me, like, you could have a cell tower on your roof, which I was worried about. He's like, but it doesn't come down. It goes, it hits a brick wall, it goes that way and that way, and it could end up affecting the person, you know, over there where it's going. Um, but it's something that, in our own homes, that we really need to take a look at this. And we got to, and um, uh, Europe does monitor where they can put cell towers. We don't. We don't, yeah. I don't. I don't. I know that there was cases. I, I, I couldn't, I can't speak to that. Okay, um, like I can't, I can't. But I don't, I know that was, there have been current concerns with that. Um, living next to a power plant and your rates of cancer, et cetera. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's something that I, I would recommend that you do definitely do more research on that um, and look at it. Because again, I think that we are, you know, we're, our nervous system is electronic, you know, like we're all like, right? You know, you just, you have to think about how it's disrupting everything. Okay. But there are things you can do, like we turn our Wi-Fi off. Yeah, like I'm I turn it off too. To go to bed, I turn, turn it off. off. Yeah. Turn it off in the morning. It doesn't do anything. I turn the router off. Yeah, you just turn it off. It just unplug like it. 30 seconds to boot up in the morning. Yeah. There's cases, like this is a RF, special case that distributes the RF Yeah. Part. So if I had to use it, yeah. you know, it doesn't, it sort of helps spread it out. It's Pong, P-O-N-G. Beautiful. There are, there are things that we can all do. Yeah. That's why I like to talk about education. Like I think That's you, a, yeah. if you educate people on, hey, there are steps you can take to make a difference. Yeah. You know, uh, all of the thing, things you presented is like, wow. But there are little things there or big things that we each can do. Yes. That, we're going to, let's get yeah, to that. Let's, you yeah. Is, you're, you're better off. Like yeah. Whether you do 100 things yeah. or one, means you're yeah. better off than you were. Like that's yes. kind of my mindset. Yes. Yes. Let's go to the next slide. Let's see. Uh, next one. That's more studies on the on the oh lead exposure. So okay, sorry, I thought that was the last. Sorry. Um, but so lead lead exposure, uh, particularly so out here. If you have, do you have old homes out here? Plenty. Okay, plenty of old homes. Okay. So when you're doing that, if anyone's renovating it. Right? I want you to be really careful about where your children are if you're around it to make sure that you don't. Some people say like it's okay to live on premises and stuff, and it really isn't. Um, this woman who started this um, thing, her, her, her lead in children causes severe neurological disorder that is irreversible. It is not, there's nothing you can do, right, to get rid of it. So with adults, it's a little bit different. 
Okay, we get stomach aches, we get certain things like that, and then it gets worse. But for, for children, you really have to watch out. So she was renovating her old Victorian home, and they were scraping the paint, and they, they were, the contractor said they were doing it properly. She was playing with her baby on the grass, with their chis, they played all summer and all that, and it was the dust. It's the lead dust that came from the paint that the baby inhaled, and he has lead poisoning, and it's done. Right? There's nothing she can do about it. So I think like, you know, we see these ads and in the city too, and it's like, you know, the children eating paint. It's not from eating the paint. A lot of parents, when they know they live particularly in lower income housing and in NYCHA and stuff, and they think, I, I got to clean, right? The more I clean, the less exposure. <clears throat> and, and unfortunately, that isn't the case. It's the dust. So they're sweeping and their children are getting more affected by it. Okay. So, um, and the, the last thing is, is don't buy... If you have nieces, nephews, children, don't buy the cheap toys from China. Don't buy them. Don't buy them at all because most of them have lead in it. If you go to the 99 cent store, Halloween, with the paint that you're putting on your skin, most of it has lead on it. Okay? There was uh, Skechers had a uh, charm you know, that they had on the shoes and a baby swallowed it and died from lead poisoning because it was 100% lead and it came from China. And no one's testing all these things. So just really be careful with that. Um, I don't like the princess crowns and all that crap. Right? I know it's like, it's overwhelming, right? But less is, you, we don't need it anyhow. I think that's why I tell people is like, you really don't, you know, the less. The lead enhances the color. That's why yeah. a lot of companies use it. Yeah, and, and it's completely unregulated yeah. in China. It's, and, and it comes over and on I boats and we don't. Yeah. Products in from China. Like yeah. Most brands that you're familiar with test. Yes. I mean, not every product company I've ever worked for, we test every production lot. Yeah. For lead, for yeah. lights, I'm in the baby industry now, you know, for BPA, stuff like that. Yeah. But even other, like craft, when we would do premiums, every batch was tested. Yeah. You know, but, but I. To your point, yeah. stuff that's 99 cents. Who knows? Brand Melissa and Doug had nice. lead in their paint, though. You're right, they did. Melissa yeah. and Doug had lead in their paint. And yeah. that was a brand that I trusted when yeah. my son was a child, you yeah. know? A child, well, he is a child, but a baby, yeah. <clears throat> so, anyhow, so it, it's something to, to, and that is in the book. That is in the book. Okay, next. Okay, so what can we do? Hey, yay. yay. <laughs> okay, what can we do? <laughs> There's hope. Next. All right, so how do we reduce and eradicate toxins in the world where treaties and agreements are ignored, right? Next, educate. So we did talk about That's that, tonight. right? So it's That's really, yeah, so it's, we really need to educate. We need to get this information to our schools. A lot of people don't know. I think the general public is unaware. I spend a lot of time speaking when I do. I speak to disenfranchised communities who don't know about this, who don't have it. You know, health is becoming a privileged thing right, which it shouldn't be. Health, I believe, is for everyone. Um, but it's the privilege that get this information and it's those in the in disenfranchised communities that do not. Uh, so we need to educate, we need to let people know. Um, not, you know, I, I, it's tough, it, it is tough, but just keep talking, keep being the change. Next. Um, hold manufacturers responsible. I really think this is, this is a big thing of mine, right? Um, I tweet all the time. I, I, I don't, I'm not really on Twitter, but I use it as my place to, that's where the manufacturers look at, right? And so you tweet at them and say, you know, listen, why are you doing that? What, what is this response? When I Instagram, you know, I go straight to all these sources and, and tag them and, and, and let people know. Um, so we need to, you know, while we can get regulations for political leaders, a lot of them are bought from the actual corporations, you know? So it's the corporations that we need to go to. And as consumers, we have a lot of power with that. Don't ever forget that. Always stay on the offense. We really do, we really do. They don't have a business if we're not buying it. That's true. Um, and that's, and that's how big sweeping changes have happened. Whether yeah, it's yeah. Gasoline or yeah, whatever. yeah. It's because consumers rise up. Yes, okay, next. A healthy environment is our right. So. There's actually over 800 lawsuits right now um, against our government for not protecting us. Uh, has, it, has everyone heard of Juliana versus the United States? It's an amazing, it's an amazing case. So it's 13 young individuals who are suing the United States of America for backing out of the Paris Climate they, Agreement. They even, um, oh, I thought they had sued each other through the Obama administration. No, this isn't the same group. No, no, There's a no, different group. Yeah, it's recent. Yeah. 
So it's at the Supreme Court right now. Um, so I think we all see it on the news, but um, uh, the, the children will definitely change this world, right? They know which ends up. Um, but yeah, so you can sue the US government. There's lawsuits pending right now. There's a company called Earth Justice, if you want to look at it, um, and they're mainly lawyers that do it um, and, and can kind of give you a heads up. I will tell you from all my activism, and um, I'm involved with a lot of groups, uh, the ocean happens to be one of my projects that I, I care deeply about. Um, and I go and I lobby all the time in DC. Um, and they, I asked them one day about, you know, like the, the, the head of the, the, the um, NGO. I said, does the peti petitions matter? I've probably signed 100 petitions like in the past two years, you know? Does it matter? And they said, it absolutely matters. And I, I think council member here could speak on that, right? Public so, pressure yeah, so it does matter, right? Sure. Yeah, so you want to get people, you, you want to sign those petitions. Keep signing them, keep spreading your voice. Um, okay, next. Yep. Uh, support the inventors. So this one, oh, that slide didn't come up, I'm sorry. So Boyan Slot um, was a, a young boy, 18 years, six years ago. Um, and he had an invention to go and clean up, you know, with all the garbage patches out there, right? So he created this invention and they told me he couldn't do it. And six years later, he's out there doing it. Um, it's having its hiccups. The big it's the big ring. The big ring. It's the big ring. It wasn't working. No, it's having hiccups, but he's still out there. Still They're going to figure it out and he's still trying. Um, next slide. And then this young girl here created an invention to detect microplastics in the water. She hasn't decided how to, she hasn't figured out how to clean them up, but she can detect them. She's 12. She's in Massachusetts. Aren't there um, now bacteria that produce microplastics that they're working on? Well, they've said things too that worms can do it as well, but it's such a massive thing. They're like amoeba-like, and you see they like yeah. ingest the microplastic like I was watching the video. Yeah. But so do we throw all that in the water then in the oceans and how's that going to affect our ecosystem? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like climate change, there's talks about like big talks about spraying our atmosphere, right? That would repel the sun, it would repel, it, yeah, but what is that going to do to us, right? I don't want to get to that point. We, so the great thing, um, next slide, the, 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 the great thing, and this is the last slide, I believe. Yeah. So um, the great thing, and then I can discuss a lot of the products that you can do, but um, my husband said to me, because, because I, you know, I, 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 it's heavy stuff, and when you think about this all the time, and you, you can't help but sometimes you, um, you, you feel like you're not winning, right? <laughs> it's like you lose hope, right? Nature regenerates itself. So you got to do this for you, and you have to do it for your kids, and I think that's the big message, right? Because if we don't do that, um, you know, we're going to go, but nature's going to be fine. Um, and that actually gives me some peace, <laughs> right? For those of us who love animals and who do, and who do love nature and appreciate it, right? You know, we, if we don't figure it out, nature will. So um, as, our, as our planet goes, so do we. Um, that's the next book, actually. The next book is Heal the Earth, Heal Yourself, um, and making that connection so people can understand that nature um, and us are connected. And that's it, that's it. So thank you, thank you everyone. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs>